Paul Echogol Adiola. So Nigerian president appointed new national security advisor and service chiefs. Oh, well. We are finally doing something about fighting Boko Haram. Koledowo, my brother. Oga Buari must have watched our last episode. Eh? Yes, Benny. Oga Buari, you keep watching and we will keep talking. You know, do it. You see, this show is very effective. So it looks like uh, the EFCC is getting back on its feet. You guys have seen how they've been arresting a lot of former governors lately. By the way, that former governor of Jigawa, the one that was sent to prison with his sons until the next hearing. I heard that uh, the man has been released to eh? that they build him out. I said, Habba, this is not fair. Now, it's not fair. If this were to be young graduates with no jobs doing Yahoo Yahoo scam, if anybody tries to build them, they will say no. Look at these people. It's so not fair. Eh? The same governor, by the way, was the one that was reported to be the best governor of the year last year. I said, the man steals. You get what I'm saying? That is God. You know what baffled me, though, was the reaction of his people when he got home after they released him. Come and see the welcome that they gave this man. Nigerians, this is our problem. Somebody stole money, they sent him and his sons to prison for stealing. Yet you are welcoming him like this. There is God, though. There is God. The people we should celebrate, we don't celebrate. The people that we shouldn't be celebrating, they are the ones that we are celebrating. So I heard that uh, the former governor of Imo State was also arrested for a 270 million naira fraud. Hmm, yes. Yeah, so but you know what made me happy? They set his home bill at 270 million naira. Yes, how incredible. All those people that stole money, when you arrest them, just set their bill at whatever amount they've stolen. Quite you call case closed now. The only thing though that pained me in his own story is that, you see, when people steal money, they don't always think about how it would affect not just them, but their family members when they get caught. Yes, because the embarrassment that it brings the whole family is not worth it. If you're already a governor, why still? You get a lot of money. I said this because so many people that have been reporting the story have been including the fact that, oh, by the way, he is the father of that popular YouTuber, Adana. You guys know Adana now. Girl, your behind is a killer. I can see even some people that are commenting on the story, they are also bringing up the daughter's name. This daughter is somebody that I actually admire. She does a lot of great YouTube videos with her husband. I just love their works. I'm saying this because the daughter may not know anything about this fraud. Now her face is also in the story. My point is being caught up doesn't only affect you, but those that are related to you. So my people, if your mother or father or any relative of yours is a government official, please and please keep it real with them. Tell them the truth so that they don't embarrass you. you know me, I'm just saying my own. So I have some great news this week. Yes, yes. First of all, two Nigerian teenagers have created a mobile web browser that is faster than Google Chrome. Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the brothers, 13-year-old Anessi and 15-year-old Osine Eanosime. They are the creators of Crocodile Browser, an Android application. I'm like, what was I doing when I was 13? I can't even remember. But those guys have really, really impressed me. And all Nigerians are very proud of you, by the way. Thank you so much for making us proud. So the app can be downloaded from Google Play Store and it is currently reviewed as a 4.7 out of 5 star rating. Yes! So the two of them started coding long before they even became teenagers. I'm like, they must be whiskeyed. Eh? Their dream is to attend Massachusetts Institute of Technology someday and eventually own their own technology company in Nigeria. So kudos to them. Make sure that you download their browser. More than 40,000 people have downloaded it. Yes, I downloaded it myself and it's really fast. Still on technology. Whatever a man can do, you guys know that women can do it better. Yes! So please give it up for four Nigerian secondary school girls this month who won first place at the 2015 Global Technology Innovation Award. Yes! So oh, yes, yes, yes! The finale was held at San Francisco in California and the challenge was for girls to create an app that would solve a problem in their community. 64 countries participated with more than 3,000 entries. But the app that won the first place was the one by this Nigerian girls. It's known as Discadios, an app for solving the problem of improper waste disposal in Nigeria. Once you've downloaded it, you can request a mobile card to pick up your waste and you will select the nearest one to you because you can select from Google Map and then you will tell them how many containers you need and they will tell you how much it is and then they will come and pick it up. You can also report a hazard in your environment if you see trash where it 
it's not supposed to be, you can report it and a waste disposal company will come and pick it up. How cool is that? This is so much needed considering the fact that Lagos alone generates 9,000 tons of municipal solid waste every day. 9,000 tons. That's really, really needed and I really admire these ladies. So many individuals and business owners are already using this app. They beat contestants from all over the world, from US, Canada, Brazil, India, UK. I am so proud right now, you know? <laughs> My girls won $20,000 shallow. One of them said something that I really appreciate and I cannot forget. People mostly believe that ICT boys, fashion shopping girls. <laughs> so us doing ICT, it inspires a lot of girls, not only in our country, but in Africa and the whole world. Amen, sister, amen. <laughs> I don't know why so many people think that only boys or guys can know about technical stuff. Can you imagine what an insult? Eh, my dear, if you are watching and you want to go into technology, please let these girls inspire you. If there's any young lady out there that wants to get into technology, let these ladies inspire you. Whatever a man can do, we can always do better. Can you imagine that some people will tell me that you are a lady, what do you know about politics? And you know, I don't get upset, I don't even do karate with them. I just look at them. I said, me, I don't know anything. I'm just keeping it real low. And they will say, hey, you didn't look like you know anything anyway. So congratulations to these girls. We're very proud of you. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Rwanda. Rwanda, Rwanda. Yeah, so, you know, I like that song, eh? We can watch that movie after, but right now, can we stay focused? This is very serious. My people, last week, Rwandan lawmakers voted in support of Mr. President Ronnie for third term. I'm like, what? Paul Kagame, who has been in power since the year 2000, 15 years ago, the man still wants to do third term. Hey, you see what I'm saying? His political party, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, has been in power since 1994, 21 years ago, yes! In fact, the MPs voted not just for third term, but they voted in support of a petition to remove presidential term limits completely from the Rwandan constitution, which means that Kagame can extend his rule even beyond the third term. Why do we like to do this in Africa? Why is it that once they get in power, they don't want to leave? Eh? Some of them would do well, and then they want to do third term, and they just spoil everything by that Ojukokoro of wanting to do third term. What do they call Ojukokoro in English? Thank you, Jare. Greed. Because of greed, they want to spoil all their good works. Why must you do third term? Eh? And don't get me wrong, I've had a lot of arguments that if that is what works in Africa, why must we change government every few years like they do in Western countries? I said, you know, maybe these people have a point, but why do we call it democracy if you will not be democratic in sharing power? Stop calling it democracy if one man must rule by fire by force till death, eh? Just change the name. That is the only problem that I have with it is that you keep calling it democracy, but you're not willing to share power. Ah, don't get me upset, Joe. So first of all, I like to say that Kagame actually deserves credit in many ways. He revived the economy after the general side and I've heard that in Rwanda especially in the cities like the capital Kigali I've heard that electricity is stable as in you get 24 hours of electricity something that we don't enjoy right now in Nigeria <laughs> not only that I heard that water is constantly running and that the roads are good in fact an Nigerian friend of mine that was there last month said Adela I was so ashamed of being a Nigerian when I got to Rwanda I'm telling you there was no leader on the street everywhere was clean I was like no kidding another thing to praise Kagame for is having a lot of young people in government I've heard that there are so many 30 something year roads in key positions again I have never been to Rwanda so please correct me if I'm wrong, but these are things that I've heard. But having said all that, the man is also described as an authoritarian ruler and a dictator for two reasons. No press freedom in Rwanda. None whatsoever. In fact, in Rwanda, the penal code, Article 234, says a journalist can face up to a year for writing or saying or drawing anything that may be perceived as insulting to a government official or police. Which means they can't even draw political cartoons that may be perceived as insulting to any any government official and then this penalty doubles to two years in prison if the journalist writes or says anything or asks any questions in court or parliament that may be perceived as insulting which means that you cannot ask members of parliament questions that may be considered insulting now if the journalist writes any story that is perceived as insulting towards mr president i'm telling you that warrants five years in prison five just imagine so if somebody is doing a show like i'm doing now and you know I say all the stuff about Mr. President, Jonathan, or Buhari. I could be arrested and given five years in prison for keeping it real. Check. 
hey, this is not fair. And, and as a result of this, many journalists in Rwanda actually censored themselves because nobody wants to go to jail. So when it comes to reporting the activities of the military and that of Mr. President, you better keep your mouth shut. That's what people tell each other. The second reason that he's considered a dictator is that he's very ruthless against critics and opposition figures, whether they are at home or abroad. Kagame does not tolerate any strong opposition voice. In fact, many of his former comrades have fled the country saying that their lives are threatened. So the Democratic Green Party, that is Rwanda's only credible opposition group, they've said that they oppose this plan to amend the constitution to allow the president to run for third term. Despite that, though, the MPs went ahead saying that, oh, they got more than 3 million signatures in a petition. So therefore, everybody in Rwanda uh, wants Kagame to come back. Keep in mind that the population of Rwanda is 11.8 million. It's not as if this signature even represents half of the population. Also, many people that signed the petition said that they were forced to sign it. This young man didn't want to sign. He says he was threatened as a result. When I refused, the local mayor said that if I needed any type of administrative form or document, I wouldn't be able to get it. They treated me like an enemy of the state. Just imagine that. They actually threatened people to sign the petition. Now, one thing that you probably won't hear of or see any photos of is uh, people protesting in Rwanda, like how people have been protesting in Burundi when their president said he would run for third term. That's because protests are not allowed in Rwanda. You are not allowed to protest. You will be arrested. People will criticize the government, lose their jobs, or they get arrested. So if you go out on the street trying to protest, they arrest you, they harass you. Nobody even wants to associate with you because of the consequences of being labeled as a protest. So Rwandans outside Rwanda would protest. They protest in UK, in US, but you will not hear of Rwandans in Rwanda protesting. So right now that the president said he wants to do third term, you will probably not hear any of them complaining, but that's because they are not allowed to, which is very, very sad. So many people even link Kagame in the genocide that killed 800,000 people in Rwanda. But of course, no one is allowed to say anything about that uh, because it would be considered insulting to the presidency and you're facing five years in prison. So it's very obvious that the government of Rwanda wanted to change the constitution, but they wanted to make it look as if the change was being driven by the people. That's why they went by trying to get signatures and forcing a lot of people to sign the petition. However, if term limits are removed in Rwanda and Kagame runs again, then he would join a growing list of leaders in East Africa who are no longer practicing democracy, even though they say they practice democracy. Like in New Uganda, for example, where the president has been in power since 1986, yet is expected to run again next year. It's so funny that the president of Uganda, the man that has been in power for 28 years, is now the one trying to convince the president of Burundi not to run for third time. Look at that. How ironic. Of course, it did not work. It's actually a joke that he will be the one trying to tell the president of Rwanda not to run, eh? which is why Burundians have continued to face political unrest over their president's bid for third term. Anyway, you guys know I don't know anything. I'll keep you updated about whatever happens in Rwanda. I don't know why some African leaders feel like they are the only savior. They are the only one that knows how to do good stuff. It, you, when you do well and then you overstay your time, you start to lose your popularity among people. Put my own. You guys know I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Ah, my dear, yeah, well, this will be more than enough. Eh? My people, sorry, we are trying to raise money. <laughs> we need to buy some chocolate for our people in South Africa. My people, I need to save my people. Can you imagine from this guy that calls himself a, a prophet or whatever? In fact, I'm starting to get tired of talking about him. But you know, he seems to like attention. So he keeps doing crazy stuff so that he will continue to be in the news. Can somebody please arrest this guy? His name is Penuel Muguni. He's a 24-year-old prophet that made his memory strip naked the other time I talked about him after supernaturally making them feel hot. I don't know what that means. So they started stripping naked in church. And for some time now, he's been making his members eat anything, telling them that he has blessed it. So now it is food. Go and eat. So they've been eating pieces of cloth and they've been eating each other's hair. They even fight on each other's hair, the weave, whatever. But what do you call it when a pastor holds a live snake and tells his church members that they should eat it and it will become chocolate in their mouth? Hey, whoa! Hey, watch you see why I have to raise funds to buy real chocolate for these people? They must be really, really hungry for chocolate or something. I don't know. Live snake, oh. And I cannot believe that these morons were also eating the snake. Che, 
So you are so desperate to eat chocolate. You see why I have to start collecting money to buy chocolate for these people, eh? Can somebody please shake them, shake them back to reality? Anybody from South Africa that is watching me, I give you the right to go and shake these people, shake them back to reality. And when will the police arrest the guy now? But you know he himself has never eaten any of the rubbish, by the way. He did not eat the hair that they were fighting over. He didn't eat the snake. Uh, he didn't strip naked. You know that he rides them like a horse once in a while. He will get on top of them and just ride. Yeah! There's God, there is God, yet they keep going back. I'm honestly starting to lose my patience because my people perish for lack of knowledge. South African government, you can't say that you don't know about this. The day that the guy will give them poison to drink and say that I have prayed over it, that is when it will be too late. I'm telling you, the only thing that I've heard so far is that the Society for Prevention of Cruelty Against Animals went to question him about this snake, but that was it. I think they need to arrest him. Let them arrest him because if they don't, will continue to give people stuff to drink. Apart from snake, he also told them to eat stone and these ones are also swallowing stones. Just imagine, it reminds me of that Brazilian pastor, the one that I talked about like two years ago, that said that his uh, sperm is a uh, holy milk. Hey, whoa! You mean Merali B? Merali B? Hey, can you imagine? Thank God that he was later arrested, but not before several women in church had oral sex with him right inside the church office. Che! <laughs> I'm not saying that all pastors are fake, oh, I beg, don't send me an email. <laughs> that I said pastors are fake. No, not all of them. Thank God for the true men of God out there, especially those of you that would call a spade a spade. We appreciate you guys. But when someone is committing a crime in the name of the Lord, mm -mm -mm, not doing anything about it, will only encourage such people to do even more. So that is why we need to keep talking about it and hopefully South African government will arrest him. So you can send your donations for the chocolates. Hello, where is the money that I... Excuse me, somebody has stolen. Hey, I kept it right here. No shaking. There is nothing on the floor. What do you mean, in fact? Call it all what have you done with my money? It was live and direct on camera. You think I'm not going to rewind this video? I'm going to rewind it and see when you did your abracadabra. You guys can send in your money and don't send it to call it away. I don't trust him when it comes to stuff like that. Just send it to me. Uh, you guys are doing anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Ghana, I am so excited about this next story. I wish more Africans would follow the example of this woman. Ladies and gentlemen, meet my kind of woman. 72-year-old Mrs. Margaret Achampong, a law practitioner who decided that enough is enough, that the government must fix the road leading to her house by fire by force. Guess what she did? After sending them two warning letters with no response, this woman sued her district municipal assembly. I was like, yes, oh, yes. God bless you. <laughs> my mother in the Lord did not do well. I was so excited. I love her guts. At first, they tried to dismiss it that, oh, you have to do this and do this and do this before you can sue us. She was like, hey, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I took care of all that before I sued you. So she did not give up. Later, they said, oh, we are working on it. Just be patient. It will get to your turn. And this is what she said. I don't know how long I can wait. I'm 72. Preach. Moreover, my car is being affected. Yes, yeah, so I beg you, tell them, tell them, you buy a brand new car and after three months, you have to start fixing things. Just imagine. My dear, did she ask for money for emotional distress? Margaret, who is acting for herself in court, is also seeking relief of 50,000 Ghana cities for the emotional stress she has suffered as a result of the bad roads. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. Thank you, Yale, my mother. <laughs> You're that for. <laughs> you said the best part of the story for me was when this woman said that she pays her taxes, so she must to enjoy the benefits of being a law-abiding citizen. If I pay money to you, I expect that you should also render service to me. And that service is not coming. In fact, property rates, they just keep on increasing. Every year they increase. They don't tell us. Yeah. Every year they increase taxes and nothing to show for it. You know why? The normal behavior of our rulers these days is that for them to only make themselves comfortable at our expense. <laughs> You might do well, you might do well. Now, what baffled me, though, was the road. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, when I put on my glasses, and I don't have any glasses today, but when I took a critical look at the periphery of the odometer of her palaba, yes, when I actually looked at that road, I realized that this road is nothing compared to some roads in Nigeria. I said, Chai! 
My sister, this is the role that you were crying about. Chai, this is the role that you sued the government for. And you know what? That made me respect her even more because a lot of people in Nigeria, they will not do anything even when they can no longer drive on the road at all, at all. You guys need to see your girl. <laughs> when I went to Nigeria recently, I don't know what I was thinking, traveling by road from Abuja to Lagos. <laughs> I was supposed to fly from Abuja to Lagos, but because of fuel scarcity at that time, they were canceling flights left and right, so I had to go by road. And you know, at first the roads were really nice. Coming out of Abuja, I was like, yes, you know, Nigeria, you know, we're, we're taking care of business, the roads are great. All of a sudden, boy oh boy, by the time we got to Lokoja and Kogi, my people, ha! I took some photos, I bet, showed them, ha! I'm telling you, it was terrible. My people, Ekiti was terrible. I started praying, Holy Ghost fire. I went through Oro, Ilori, Ogbomo Shaw. I prayed like I have not prayed in a long time. I said, Father, you must remember. Remember that phone services are not good in this bush, eh? So if anything must so happen to your girl, nobody would even know where I am. I couldn't say more than that. Holy Ghost, this road, this road, this road. How is this possible, eh? There was not a single rest area. <laughs> so if you needed to use the bathroom, the driver would stop by the roadside. And he only stopped once so that you can do your business by the roadside. I said, eh? And I could not believe that everybody else in the car was not concerned at all by the state of the road. I wanted to shake the people and scream and say, people, this is not right. But you know, they would think that I'm crazy because they're so used to it. Above all, a driver was speeding like no man's business. The guy would try to overtake without a clear view. And I will be the only person in the car shouting, oh God, driver, now what do you they do? And then he would pull back and slow down. And I'll look at everybody else like, why is nobody saying anything? Finally, when we were already in the city, getting close to our destination, this driver was still driving recklessly. So when he realized that this small girl would not shut up her mouth, that was when he said, hey, my sister, eh, it's not my fault, so it's just that I really, really need to use the toilet. So when I heard that, I didn't know what else to say. He needed to poo poo. <laughs> Guess it's complicated when there's no rest areas where you can use the toilet or anything. So when will somebody sue the Nigerian government for failing to fix our roads? We pay taxes in Nigeria too, no be so. People are literally dying on these roads every day. In fact, this same Kogi road that I traveled on, 30 people died there earlier this month in an accident. 30 people in one day, one day just on the Kogi road alone. So if this woman could sue the government for failing to fix the road leading to her house. I don't know why we can do something about the roads in Nigeria. Uh, there are good roads in Nigeria. Not all roads are bad, but there are really, really terrible roads in Nigeria. It doesn't matter to me whether you are rich or not. The bad roads will kill anybody in Nigeria and definitely it spoils all cars. So the case has been adjourned till July 21st. I'll keep you guys updated. But honestly, even if she doesn't get what she wants, at least she did something about it. And I know that they will feel embarrassed now that their story made international headlines. I'm sure they will fix her road at some point. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I leave today, I'd like to wish all my Muslim followers happy Eid al Fitr. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> Barika de Salah. Uh, Ecuador. Ecuador. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out. Welcome to Fossville Luxury Hotel. At Fossville Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24-hour power supply, poor condition, free international calls, free time pumping service, and free car battery charge. So what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fossville Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Linoba Michele off Rajirazaki Road, First Estate, Amuwo, or the First Start Lagos. For more information or reservation, please call us on 080 75 or 080 90 You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.fossvhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Fossvhotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.